Hello and welcome to Let's Learn Computing. I'm Todd Colwell. Today's tutorial is to create an animation with Pivot Animator. It's for Windows PC, subject is computing, and it's for children ages 7 to 9. In order to do this lesson, you'll need to make sure that you have Pivot Animator installed on your school network. And there's a few sites where you can get Pivot Animator from, but this is one example. Uh, you also, of course, need an idea for an animation, whether you're doing a topic in a different subject or just an animation by itself. So the concepts in the lesson, uh, to use sequencing programs, obviously to put the slides of the animation in the right order, and for the challenge activity, we'll do some advanced image searching. So the easy activities are to create an animation. So let's have a look at loading the figure type and loading a background. Okay, so this is the Pivot Animator screen. And first of all, um, if you want to change the background size, it's best to do it before you start putting different slides. So you go to Edit and Options. Then in the Options, I might change this to 600 by 300, just to show you a different one. Now this Onion Skin setting means to show what happened in the previous frame. So I'm gonna just leave this at one and I'll show you that when we go to the editing. Now I can click OK, and you see the size has changed. Right, so to start, we can also add a background. So that's in File, Load Background. Now I found a JPEG type of image, and the reason I know that, you can right click, go to Properties, and check Type of File, JPEG. Uh, just a quick note on image searching, if you want to search for something that you can reuse, just go down to Search Tools, um, usage rights and then you can reuse it and we can also modify it so that's why I've got this picture here right and so insert that into the animation it says would you like to set the animation dimensions to the dimensions of the image so do you want it to be the same picture size as the image or do you want to keep the size that you've set already so I'm going to click no and it's going to actually crop the image a little bit you can see the original image was a little bit bigger at the at the bottom there past the tree and then this one's cut off a bit, but that's fine for now. All right, so now we can start the animation. So the, the reason this is called Pivot Animator is because all of these little red points are pivot points. So we can pivot like that. And the one in the middle, the orange one, that's for moving around. Next of all is to change the size. We can use this up and down or simply just type a, a value into there. Uh, I'm gonna make this about 70, so it's a bit smaller. Okay, so the idea is that you just slowly pivot these points and then keep on adding frames, and the frames are going to appear at the top. So let's try to walk up the hill. So we can do that. And then add a frame. And then here. Now this is the onion skin that you can see from before, the previous frame. And then change the hands. Add a frame. A bit more. Add a frame. And you just continue, not moving too much each time, otherwise it will look too jumpy when we play it all together. Now I've completed all the frames I've wanted to. You notice the first character is now yellow in the first frame because I've went and changed the color, figure color is over here. But remember, if you want to do that, you have to change each individual one. So this one, the next one goes back to black. Now, just to see what you've been up to, press play. And uh, this is the option to continue playing it in a loop. If you're going to do a loop, you need to make sure that it goes back to the, where it started to. Otherwise, it will go to the end and then suddenly jump back quickly. And this is the frames per second. So it goes very slow. Well, we can have fast walking up to 33 frames a second. Some options for getting some more figures into the animation. Uh, using this tool, the duplicate figure tool, if I click that and then I get a second little person, I can drag with the middle and pivot just the same. Okay, I can delete the figure using that one. Um, I can also go to flip if I want to flip the reverse side, you can see when I flip there, or I can go to create figure type, edit figure type, you can do that little pencil there, or you can go up to here into the file menu and go to create figure type. All right, so I'm going to use the delete tool for this, and then I'm going to make a little board for him to go on up to. 
So there's the line tool and you can just simply click from the middle and then it will create a new point like that. So click when you want to put it down. Then we can use the circle tool. It has to go from a point already like that. Click, circle tool again, and click. All right, so this one is the fill of the circle. If you want to have a solid circle or a donut sort of shaped circle, this is a, how thick you want each line to be or the circle to be. Just select the one you want to change. Um, this one sets where the, the main handle is, the one that moves the whole object around rather than just pivot on a point. Uh, this deletes. This, if you have a segment that's too long, if you click that, you see it's just inserted another, another segment in the middle. And this one is uh, static or dynamic. Now, by default, all the segments are dynamic. That means that they can pivot. But if you just want to have a whole image all together, then this you can click this button to be static and that will be not be able to move once we um, click save. All right, so it's most of the time the children will want to have dynamic segments because they'll understand that they can just take any part of one of these red dots and um, move them, pivot. This part here changes from the line to a circle. So that's all of the buttons. Once you've finished that, you have to go to save and you can see that there's other figures in here as well. So I'll show you those as well. But um, I'll just call this a name board. And then we can save my little skateboard. All right, and close that. So the other ones, just go to File, Load Figure Type. And it should be in the folder Stick Figures. So there's all sorts of pre-made ones as well. Um, something like Cowboy. They're a bit more sophisticated, some of these, than the, the default Stick Man. All right, so I don't want this one. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to load the figure that I just saved and then we can add it into the animation. Okay, so now I've put in my extra sprite, my little skateboard. Now I can play, show you what that's done. So you can see he's got the skateboard at the end there. Now, so that is a medium activity to create your own figure. Um, and we looked at static or dynamic. The other thing that you can do is import an image and that can be a sprite, that can be a character in the animation. So to do that, go to Google Images and this is an advanced skill to be able to search for a specific file type of image. So I'm just gonna search for a bird that can be flying in the sky and I'm going to type file type and then no space, colon, PNG, that means portable network graphics type of image. Click on images, then scroll down to see one that you like. So something like this one. Now with PNG images, it's important that you get this checkered background, the white and blue background, because that means that the rest of the image is transparent. Otherwise you're going to get a big ugly white square around the image. So right click, save image as, and I don't really want to call the illustration of a bluebird isolated on a white background. I'll just call it bird. So call it a sensible name. And then just check that this actually says PNG image, save. All right, so back in Pivot Animator, go back to here, and then we go to File, and instead of Load Figure Type, we go to Load Sprite Image. And then you can see that it's in my Downloads folder, and then we can have this one. Right, so when you import it, it might do this. It might be absolutely huge. So we can use this one to move the bird, but first of all, obviously, we have to use the Resize tool. And I'm just going to use about 10, 10%. So there's a yellow one to move around and there's only one pivot point like this. Okay. So luckily if we press flip though, we can pivot from different directions as well. So I'll put in a few frames with the bird flying back in the back of the sky and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so let's have a look at our finished animation. And I need to make sure that the frame rate I want to save the file as is okay. So I'm happy with that, 10 frames a second. And then go to export animation. Now there's two options. You can export it as a GIF. The file size will be a little bit smaller and it can go on web pages. Or you can save it as a video file, which will be a bit bigger. Um, so I'll save it as a video file. So you can see that I've saved it already, yes. But uh, the resize, it means that do you want to resize the file to make it smaller? Oh, this is quite a small background already, so I'm happy with that. This super sample 
This will make the file size bigger, but it attempts to make the edges more smoother. See, if it's a little bit pixelated at the edge. So it's, the one is the lowest setting, and four is the highest setting. So um, we don't need to compress it to try to make the file size smaller. So I'm going to put it at four. Um, but if you just leave it at the default value, it's fine. So that will take a little while to save. You can see the finished video full screen. All right, so it's great fun for you and for the children. I hope you enjoy it. To request a tutorial or to download a copy of the slides used in this tutorial, visit letslearncomputing.com. While you're there, please subscribe to the Let's Learn Computing YouTube channel so you don't miss a tutorial. I'm Todd Colwell. Thanks for listening and see you next time.